Scariest paranormal encounter while at work? I used to work at a group home for young adults, 20 to 14, with autism, and the house I worked in was the scariest. I remember working graveyard and one of my clients would not sleep, so I kept him up cleaning with me so I could keep an eye on him. At one point he looks fleeing scared, which I just thought was his manic schizophrenia episode. He backs into the corner and looks at the doorway behind me. I tell him, hey bud, you're okay and as soon as I say that, I feel an ice cold hand just run down my arm and I'm having to play it off like I'm not soiling myself to try to keep this kid as calm as possible. Another time, I'm sitting downstairs with co-workers and one of them is sitting in the hallway. I look over and see the darkest fleeing shadow in the bright hallway. Looked over six foot tall and I'm just staring as it just stands there. This seemed like it lasted forever and in the blink of an eye, it was gone. Same kiddo is in a super manic episode and he's freaking out. No one can calm him down and he's just screaming at people, don't let him get me and one of my coworker asks, who? The dark man, the devil. The kid is crying at this point and they're like, but we're the only ones here, you're okay, and the kid points to the corner of his room and just says, no no no. One of my coworker walks to the corner and the kid basically fleeing screeches like a banshee out of fear and tells people to save her. That house I swear had some fleeing demon feeding in the negative energy of these kids' behaviors and whatever else. The downstairs especially had a dark sense to it. I fleeing hated that house, especially grave shifts. Mine isn't too scary, but it's creepy enough when I'm experiencing it. I do nails at a day spa that feels very peaceful and welcoming when other people are there. It feels completely different when I'm there alone. Every single time. The spa is located among other businesses in a small strip mall building that was probably built in the 1970s at the earliest. It's been a day spa for about 15 years, before that, I don't know, but I'm sure it hasn't been through very many owners. Our neighbors all close around 7 o'clock or 8 p.m. Sometimes I stay past closing to do my own nails or get some deep cleaning done. I'm not easily spooked anymore, as I've seen some stuff, but I immediately get an uneasy feeling as soon as I'm alone, even when it's summer and gets dark later. Feelings like I'm being watched, random phantom voices that can't always be explained as coming through the wall from next door, a feeling that I'm about to see someone out of the corner of my eye or a shadow figure standing in one of the empty massage rooms as I walk by, etc. I lock myself in, turn my music up loud, keep the lights on, and hustle down the darkened hall with my heart in my throat when it's finally time to go. I've always just assumed that I'm freaking myself out with my overactive imagination. So this one time last spring, I was doing nails past closing time with one of my regular clients. It was the first time I got that creepy feeling after closing when someone else was there with me. We were just chatting and I was trying to ignore feeling creeped out because my client didn't seem to think anything felt off. I kept hearing random feigned noises but ignored them they might have been coming from a neighbor business or maybe it was the AC system. Then I heard what sounded like someone shuffling papers just outside the nail room door, and I got the impression that someone was moving around just outside my field of vision. My client stopped talking and said, is someone else here? I asked what she heard, and she said it sounded like papers shuffling and someone tiptoeing down the hall. I got up and searched every room in the spa, finding it empty. It's a small space, just a reception area, a long hallway, and eight rooms, plus the break room and bathroom branching off the hall. There are no loose papers left around to make noise everything is always put away in drawers, and there are just things like lotions and implements for facials and stuff in the other rooms. Nothing to make a shuffling paper sound. We laughed it off and I said jokingly that it was the spa's friendly ghost. But I asked a couple of my coworkers if they felt creeped out when they were alone. The spa manager and the receptionist told me they also feel watched after closing time. And the owner, just love her, said, oh yeah, I swear the place is fleeing haunted. I hate being there alone. When I was 20 years old, I worked at an assisted living facility. It was a big three-story building with like 50 folks living there. It had a pager system that let you know what room or corridor to go to if someone needed help, and everyone who worked there was required to have one. It went off constantly. Usually though since I was just a server in the dining room, I rarely got asked to run up and help someone. One day, I was folding napkins in the dining room after dinner service, there was a dining room for residents, when I got a beep on my pager. Third floor, west hallway it said. I figured someone else was gonna take care of it since it was after dinner, and the staff was helping folks. A minute or two goes by and the pager goes off again. 
I asked my coworker if I should go check since I had just finished folding napkins and had a few minutes. He shrugged. I decided to go check since, well, you never know, and I would hope someone would go help my grandparent or parent should they have made it to one of those places. I'm in the elevator and get yet another page, third floor, west hallway. I get off the elevator and make my way around the corner expecting to possibly see one of the residents on the ground. Instead, I see an old man standing at the window at the end of the hallway next to the stairwell. As I walk towards him, he turns around. I note that he was in his mid to late 60s, silver hair, red and black plaid shirt and worse jeans with suspenders, and his glasses were slightly off balance. Excuse me sir, but is there anything I can help you with? I asked, I got a page to come check this hallway, I told him. He smiles. Says, no thanks, I no longer need help, suddenly he walks right through the closed door to the stairwell. I literally run back to the elevator, go back downstairs, go out back for a smoke. As I sit down, some coworkers see me shaking and ask me why. I show them my pager and tell them what had just happened. None of them received a page at that time. As I was describing the man, my coworker drops the glass he was holding. Did he have suspenders and black glasses with a cracked lens? He asked, yeah. I exclaimed. My coworker just sits down right where he was standing and starts rocking back and forth. Apparently the man I had been summoned to help had passed away one year ago to the date and that co-worker was the one who found him while checking in. He used to sneak downstairs to smoke and it would set off the alarms. Always right after dinner. This was only the second creepiest thing to happen to me while working there. While in college, I worked at a popular retail store for two years. We had this store ghost named Ted. Though, Ted was more of an explanation for the electrical mishaps that occasionally happened, i.e. the fitting room call buttons going off, but no one being there, lights flickering in the break room, or a beep that occurred over the walkies. We never thought of Ted as an actual spiritual being or as something serious. Well. One day I was working in the fitting rooms, which meant basically unlocking the fitting rooms, writing the customer's name on the fitting room doors, putting away go backs, checking to see if the customers needed any other sizes etc. It was a week night right after the holidays, meaning that it was the slowest time of year, so we only had a few customers that night. It was about 15 minutes until closing, and a male customer came in wanting to try on two shirts. I let the customer into the fitting room, warned them that we were closing soon, and to let me know if they needed any other sizes. There were no other customers in the fitting rooms, but when you are zoned to fitting rooms, you have to stay there while there's a customer, unless they ask you for a size. This is to prevent stealing and to make sure no one locks themselves out in their underwear. You'd be surprised how often this happens. So I'm sitting there waiting for the customer to be done or ask for help for the next 10 minutes, as all the go-backs are done and there is nothing to do. Five minutes until closing, my manager then calls out on the walkie. Close the fitting rooms, we've been dead for the past half hour, so you should be all cleared. Standing there knowing that I still have a customer in the fitting rooms, I responded. Actually, I still have a gentleman trying on clothes. There's a pause. Then a few of my coworkers chime in on the walkies, stating that there literally hasn't been a soul in the store for a while. The fitting rooms are on the side of the store a bit secluded, and you can only see the rest of the store if you step out of the room, so I couldn't attest to this. I stood by my claim knowing I let a customer into the fitting room about 10 minutes ago, and they had not come out yet since I would have saw them. There is only one way to get in and out of the fitting rooms, and they would have had to pass me. So out of curiosity, I decide to knock on the door that the customer was in. No answer. I knock once more and then loudly stated that I was coming in, since this sometimes happened, and I would see customers getting changed because they didn't hear me the first time. Again, a lot more common than you would think. I unlocked the fitting room, and it was empty besides for the two shirts that the customer had brought into to try on. There was no sign of the customer anywhere. And I was positive the customer did not pass me. My coworkers claimed that I must have just missed them or was just tired. But the creepiest part was that the name I had written on the door was Ted. I work at construction company and we also do demolitions. I was tasked to supervise this demolition of an old hospital, which will be soon erected with another new hospital building. We're having dinner in sight, we stayed there for the duration of the contract since it's far from city, five hours drive, when we heard voices. Not one, but several voices coming from everywhere. We were just seven guys, me, engineer, our two drivers, safety officer, and three heavy equipment operators at that time. Our labors went home, we tend to hire local people around our projects. 
We went outside to look where this voice is come from. We ended up looking at nothing since it is dark and there should be load and a number of people besides us. We also didn't explored the half demolished building since that's not safe. We can't fully understand what were the voices telling or talking, but it seems like what you will hear in a busy place. Then we heard a cry, that was the time we said flee bit and went back to our barracks. We have our shovels and picks beside us. Hard hats and steel toes on. Nothing deadly happened for the rest of the night. The contract was two months for demolition and clearing of the place to give way for the upcoming construction, but we did it for a month. Not really that fast but totally the longest month in our life. The haunting night repeated several times. I don't know what happened on the construction team since they're different contractors. I'm sure they got scared.